Welcome back to Don's Life, welcome to the channel. Thanks for joining today. If you watched the previous episodes leading up to this one, you know today is the video that we're going to add the newly wrapped, which I'm working on right now, EGR fender flares for my GMC Sierra AT4. And then we're taking off the stock wheels and we're going to add the new ones by Brink Wheels. Let's go. Okay, I admit it, I got a little excited and I've already wrapped a couple of these off camera. They're done. I think they look pretty good. They have some fingerprints on them. I'll wipe them down after I put them on and just make sure if there's any bubbles and stuff, we take care of those. But for the most part, they look pretty good. I'm just finishing a couple more. I got one there on the bench. I'll get those done. And then I'm going to take off the mud flaps that we need to take off to make these fit on there. So you'll see me put these back on and then we'll address these spacers and the wheels. Good morning, it is the next day. It's actually quite early. I underestimated just how long wrapping these fender flares would take me. So we're gonna throw them onto the truck. I don't wanna keep you guys waiting longer than you should. You've been patient. You've watched probably two videos leading up to this transformation, and this is gonna be the third. Let's just move the BMW, give ourselves some working room, get these fender flares back on. Really easy to clip on. I'll show you that again if you missed the first video. And then we'll mount up the tires and just hopefully it'll all come together. Let's go. Just have to pull the AT4 up a little bit, maybe position it this way, just so we got a little more room to work with. All right, we're in a good position. Let's just take off these back mud flaps and then put these fender flares on. Now just in case you've forgotten, I'll show you how easy these are to install. We got a bunch of these clips. They have a little tab on them you can see sticking down there. Those actually have to push on in behind these fender flares and then part of it clips on to the plastic that's here. In the plastic where there's not enough of a gap, I just use this pry tool to open it up a bit and then I can get that clip in there. Pretty simple. And then we have a screw from the mud flap, at least on the front, that we reuse right there that goes here. So I'm gonna fit these on, make sure our weather stripping is pushed out to the edge nice like that. And because this is wrapped, we're not gonna have to worry about sand and grit scratching the paint. Okay, okay, this is probably the most ridiculous it's gonna look in this video. Got both sides done. And now it is inset even more, but that's okay. Because we know those are getting put on next. Okay, I went ahead and I've actually done the other side and I'm gonna say, you know, I'm not gonna say, but I did anticipate that the front fender flare was going to require some additional trimming. And I felt that I'd probably have to take the carpet liners inside and I'd have to tuck them back a little bit. And that's exactly what we've had to do. Plus I've trimmed the front lower valence just a little bit. So I'm gonna take the back wheel off, put the new one on with the spacer. And I'm going to take the front wheel off. And then we're gonna show you the alterations that I'm making to the inner wheel well area. And then we'll put the spacer on and the wheel, because remember these stick out about a half an inch more than the ones that we just took off. That means the geometry is all off when we turn. So I figured out where the rubbing was on the other side. I've adjusted for it. And then we're gonna walk you through this side. Let's go. Ah! 
Here are the spacers we're putting on. There are the specs. It's very important to notice the bore is 78.1. That's this inner area here. It has to fit snug on here. Then when this is in place, the wheel is going to fit here, but we have some hub centric rings to adapt to the wheels that we're putting on. That'll make that snug. So everything centered as well as the lug nuts are beveled. So they're gonna pull everything right to the middle of each lug nut. We should be centered, we should have no vibration. First, I'm gonna put on a little bit of this thread locker that they ship with this product. I'll link it in the video description below. And I'm just gonna put a little bit on here, nothing excessive. I've used this exact thread locker before and I've never had a problem with it seizing. And even if it did, nothing, a little heat wouldn't help soften to be able to get it off. Almost forgot the hub centric rings. These are the three sizes they've sent over. We need the 78.1 bore and they're labeled on the side. This one right here. So I'm going to direct your attention up to the front lower valence here. Here's the piece I had to trim off the other side. So I've got it taped off and there's kind of a natural line here. If I just cut in like that, we'll shave out this piece. It's never meant to be connected to anything. So that's the way that it is. And then we have the fender liner here. You can see there's a bit of a bend naturally right there in this hole. We're going to drill a small hole here, push this back and connect them together. Now this side here is not for the faint of heart. This might be something you don't want to do. It's my truck, I chose to do it, and I'm okay with that. But what we've done here is we've already masked out that we're gonna move the fender flare out a little bit. It's okay in the back, it still flexes enough to connect with the body. But we are going to use the hole that was here for the mud flap, the second hole that wasn't used when this was on. We are going to connect this to there. So it's gonna pull the fender flare from here out to here. So you can see the flexing of the fender flare. It's not that big of a deal. We can do that. The part you might not like is this tab here that we were screwing into before. We're going to just bend that back slightly with our vice grips, just bend it out of the way, just enough that the wheel can still clear, but we do need to bend it up a little bit. It can be bent back. It's just to secure a mud flap. I'm not that worried about it. And then we have to trim along this line here I might actually have to bend it out a little more, um, but we're gonna start with that line and then adjust as needed once the tire is put back on.
Couple quick things I forgot to mention is we're gonna have to pull this back with a cable tie. So we're gonna put a little slit here. We're gonna run this underneath. There's actually a space where we can connect all this. That'll pull that in. But you'll see how this buckles here. We're gonna use one of the original screws from the mud flap. And then once that's tightened up, this shouldn't pull that out anymore when this is cinched in. Okay, that's enough nonsense. Let's get this last wheel on. Don't worry, I torqued the front wheel. You didn't see that on camera, but this is what we look like. We still have to put the center caps on. But Mrs. Dawn's life's got something special planned for that. Those little touches, you know, those little details. So we'll check in with her, get this finalized, pull it outside and take a better look. What are you up to? <laughs> well, surprises. I see surprises. Okay, I'll wait outside till you're done. Okay. Yeah, let's put that last one on. Sorry I didn't give you the cap all by itself. It's okay. Well, that's handy. You don't have to do one at a time. <laughs> you should be doing this stuff, not me. I am doing this stuff. Well, you should be doing all <laughs> of this stuff. I, I think more people would subscribe to the channel if you were doing all of this. Let me know in the comments below, everybody, if you think that Mrs. Dawn's life should be modding all the vehicles. I think he will lose subscribers. You guys can agree with the wife. Oh, well, that's going to look good. We got the other ones here. Let me uh, post eat these and then put them on. There you go. Thank you. There we go. There are the new black wheels by Brink Wheels. These aren't sponsored, but I will leave a link in the video description below if you want to get yourself a set of Brink Wheels. I've got a discount code for you, so definitely check that out in the description. I think we made the right choice. I think they look great. The bronze ones look good too. Don't get me wrong, but this is a YouTube channel. We can change things up. It helps make content. I still have the bronze wheels in the boxes. Now, some people might be asking, why did I go and put the spacers? Well, two reasons maybe three. So the first reason is these wheels, although they're a new finish that wasn't available before, the offset that would be needed to achieve this stance was currently not available. That doesn't mean it won't be available, but at the time of this video, not available. Now, the spacers that I have on there, I'm comfortable with, so I'm not too worried about that. But if I was to sell this truck, the offset of those wheels is actually almost the same as the stock wheels. So if I was to take all the mods off of this truck, but leave these wheels with the sail, they would fit pretty much the same as the stock 20 inch wheels that come with the AT4, or at least my 18 inch Duratrax are very close to that offset. So I should go with that because I know that it's very close. So if we were to leave these wheels with it, whoever got the truck next would have a stock or very close to stance, not have to worry about any rubbing with the mud flaps put back on and all that stuff. So that's part of the reason. So there's two reasons for you. Number three is these wheels do not have a cutout in the back. Now, some of you might wonder why didn't I use the one and a half inch spacers that I had that we put on the Escalade for now? Well, I needed to go with the two inch because they had to clear the stock lugs. These rims do not have a recess like the factory ones do to allow for say an inch and a half spacer with the ability to still put the factory rim on because it has those cutouts for where the new lug position is. So those are the three reasons. You could agree, you can disagree, you can light me up in the comments, it doesn't really bother me. I think it looks really, really, really good. Now the work's not done. I do have to take off all of the wheels in about 50 miles, 100 miles and retorque the spacers, then put these wheels back on. 
and then drive with them for another 50 to 100 miles and then retorque them and then we're good. I am curious what your comments are so please leave a comment down below. Do you like the bronze wheels? Do you like these wheels? Should have I gotten these ones in bronze? Lots of choices. They can always be powder coated but right now they're brand new. We're going to leave them this way. Again I can keep changing things up however I see fit. And speaking of changing things up we are going to do some lighting from Putco in the front grill area. I know you're interested about some of the products that they have when it comes to front end illumination not just the Freedom Blade whether you feel good about that mod or not but we're going to do that so on that note we'll end today's video if you're not a subscriber please consider subscribing hit that like button and we'll talk to you next time